good morning. This is CSAM Church Session. I am female pastor prophet king and I'll be reading from I'll be coming from sorry the life of Christ let us pray dear heavenly father I thank you for giving me an inkling for opening up my eyes to see as I talk on the female woman of Samaria, Samaria, in Jesus' name. I pray that others may, when they hear this teaching, that they will comprehend and understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto them in through by my the teaching that I will bless to have. And I thank you that you will open every eye and break up all the foul grounds of their heart, the stony walls that has been built there. And I pray, Lord, that they will be dissolved. In Jesus' name, I pray, O Lord God. Amen. Okay, we're going to turn to John. Chapter 4, verses 1. John chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. The woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and said it to the men. That's part of John 4, 29. I just got to go there and read the rest of it. to do oh that's Acts I'm sorry wrong a chapter over too far okay the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the men Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? The topic of the message is the woman of Samaria. That's the topic.
Sure. Few in the gospel history have been read with greater interest than the history of the Samaritan woman. It presents before internet than the history of the Samaritan woman. It presents before us a series of instructive and important facts which cannot fail to edify the devout and com contemplative mind. It will only be possible just to glance at the more prominent parts of this portion of the gospel history. The first thing which meets our attention is a weary traveler. The traveler is on foot, a homely with homely attire, his clothing. Without one sign of temporal distinction or greatness about him. So he, it was a traveler and he was coming and he wasn't dressed like he was anybody important. He was dressed ordinary. Like the people around him who he was coming to see. This traveler is on foot. He's a weary traveler. He's a tired traveler. Because he, he was coming from Galilee, Judea. Who is he? A good question. Who is this traveler? He is the long predicted Messiah of the Jews, the Savior of the world. Yes, you behold in that traveler the prince of the kings of the earth. But he is now on his errand of humiliation and mercy. He is now at last. No, I'm sorry, not that word. He is now a basin himself and appearing as a servant although he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. From where does he come? He had been in Judea teaching and preaching the gospel of his kingdom, it appears that great multitudes of people was traveling with him. That the multitude had received his message and had been baptized by his authority. As you would look at in John 4, uh, 1, 2, and 3. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself baptized 
not but his disciples. He left Judea He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Where was he going? He was going into Galilee and his direct route was through Samaria. Therefore, it is written, he must need, I'll read it, verse 4, he must need go through Samaria. You will find in his second visit to Galilee, he wrote one of his most Wonderful and glorious miracle. The cure of the nobleman's son, which ended in his conversion with that of his whole house. We have been brought before, before us. A thoughtless sinner, such as such was the Samaritan woman. Her character is stated in verse eighteen. Let's look at John four eighteen. For you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. And that said, you truly. And we read up, uh, uh, let's go to 16. Jesus says to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. She didn't have no husband, but the woman had six men in her life. The first five didn't satisfy her. She was seeking something that they could not give her, could not satisfy the one in her heart. She was looking for true love. True love, the only the love that comes from God the Father from above. That's the love she was looking for, the love of Jesus Christ. That only Jesus could give. She had an emptiness in her heart. And she wanted to fulfill it. That's why she was going from man to man to man. Her character is stated in verse 18, I said, but it is evident. That she was ignorant of the plague of her own heart, living without God and without hope. A person a stranger to godliness, very far off by wicked work, yet she was a bigot to the national religion of her country. The Samaritans had 
erected a revival, a rival, a rival temple on the summit of Mount Gerson. Gerson. Them, Gerson, and contended that theirs was the right temple after the death, death of Nehemiah. This was the destroyed. It was destroyed about a hundred and thirty years before Christ. But most probably had been rebuilt now between the Jews and Samaritans. There was existed a most deadly, deadly, deadly hatred. Wow, a deadly hatred. Beyond buying and willing. Yeah, buying and selling all commerce was forbidden. Verse 9. Going to read John 4 verse 9. Then says the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Okay, so I'm going to read up. To let you know why Jesus asked her for the water. Now Jacob's well. Chapter um chapter four. Let's read verse five. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sikar near to the partial of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, about twelve noon, there comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away to the city to buy meat. Then says the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that you being a Jew Ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. I'm going to read verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, Excuse me. If you knew the gift of God and who it was, who it is, excuse me, that says to you, give me to drink. You would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. It seems this woman's religion was such she 
professed to have was wrong in every particular way. It was national, wait, that's not right. It was national, not personal. She had no fear of God. That's one. Two, it was based on ancient custom and not on God's word. That's verse 20. Let's go to verse 20. Our fathers worship in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. It was bigoted and male violent and not the religion of love. Hence, see how she treated Christ. Verse 9. Oh, I read verse 9. Okay. True religion is personal, scriptural, merciful. Such then was the woman noticed. Jesus, I'll go to verse uh, 21 to 24. Jesus says to her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman noticed. The happy meeting all seems accidental. Christ is on his journey. It was now the sixth hour or about noonday. This is over. Okay. He was tired and hungry and thirsty. He rested during the sultry part of the day. He selects a well for the place most likely designing to die upon bread and water. His disciples were gone for the provision, and he is alone. But lo, a woman draws near the person we have described, and here the Savior and the sinner meet. Christ, Jesus, and the Samaritan woman, they meet. The physician and the sick, the shepherd and the straying sheep, Jesus, who knew all things, had doubtless 
foresee the event high desirable that such a meeting meeting shall play, take place how essential some of you know the time when you first met with the Savior observe. We're going to observe the conversation. The conversation of the Savior. He asked for water and thus elects, elects her natural bitterness of spiritual bitterness of the spirit. He then refers to her ignorance of the goodness of God to her in his great unspeakable gift. If thou knowest here Here she in in oh, evidence her ignorance of spiritual things. Christ there proposes the water of life. Christ was offer her the water of life. But she thought he was talking about the natural water that would come out of that well. He then reveals his knowledge of her sinful state and life. That verse 17. That was read. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have had, had well said, I had, have no husband. He then reveals his knowledge. Of her sinful state and life. He draws an indirect confession of her sins. He removes the refuge of lies to which she had fled and teaches her the nature of acceptable worship. He declares himself to be the Messiah. Okay, that's uh, in verse. The woman says to him, I know that the Messiah comes, which is called Christ. When he is come, he would tell us all things. Jesus says to her, I that speak to you am he. The conduct of the woman. She evidently personally believed in the Savior. One. Two. She hastened to proclaim the Redeemer to her country. Men left her water pot. She was instrumental in bringing many to Jesus. That's verse 30. Let's read um, John 4. 38, and I sent you to reap that were on. You bestowed no labor. Other man labored, and you are entered into 
their labor. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For he said, the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abide there two days. I want to read also um, John 4, verses 28 and 29. The woman went, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the man, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And it's 230. Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. So a few more things I want to leave with you. And I said to Eric, the kind of thing. I want to leave with you this is for. Now Christ is with us by the preaching of the gospel. One. Two, what is the nature of the religion we pro profess? Do we know him, love him, etc.? Are we three? Are we laboring to bring sinners to Christ? Four, no instrument too feeble to be useful in his cause. And that con concludes the reading of the, the Samaritan woman of the life of Christ. And I would like to thank, let's bow our head. I would like to thank everyone that lis is listening and that will listen. That their hearts and their eyes and their minds be open to what Jesus is saying to the Samaritan woman, those that are without Christ. He's offering the Samaritan woman the cup of salvation, the bread of life, the living water. So I like to thank you that God will bless the readers and hearers of his holy word. Now may the Lord watch between thee and me while we ask them one for another. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen.